Hi everybody, welcome back to part 4 of Bravo Project. Today we will be talking about the uh, clock module for Bravo Project. Um, as you can see from the PCB, uh, we actually have two different modules on the same PCB, one being the clock module and the other one is the program counter. Um, since both of those are on the same PCB, I'll be soldering everything and building the whole module. Uh, however, in this video, we'll be only focusing on the clock module. So with that, um, let's have a look at the uh, circle logic and how basically the circle works. And then after that, I'm, I'll be soldering the, the PCB and we're going to talk about that. All right, let's talk about the clock circuit in our computer. The clock circuit is quite simple. Uh, essentially, uh, it has a, a 3.68 megahertz crystal oscillator that we could use the output of it as our clock signal in our computer. And as you can see here, um, the output of that oscillator is going directly to a set of header pins at the bottom that I'm going to talk about that header pin shortly. We also have a 74HC161 4-bit binary counter in the middle. And you may ask, okay, what's the point of having a binary counter in the middle of a clock circuit? Well, the point here is that we are using this binary counter as a clock divider. Essentially, what we are doing is we are changing the original clock speed to a lower speed using a binary counter. So let's, let's see how it works. You know, a 4-bit binary counter, as you may know, has some inputs and some outputs and, of course, some uh, control signals or control pins, right? So the inputs here are from D0 to D3. Uh, in this specific build, all of those uh, input pins are actually tied to ground, and essentially we are setting 0 on all of the inputs. In fact, we are not reading anything from input side of the chip because we are tying the parallel enable pin, which is pin number nine here, to high. This pin is an active low pin and whenever you want to read something and basically input something to the chip through D0 and D3, then you're gonna bring that pin low and that way you're gonna read a value into the chip. However, in this circuit, we're not reading anything from inputs, therefore this pin is permanently tied to high. Other pins, pin 7 and 10, are basically our count enable um, pins, uh, which when you set it to high, these both of them are active high pins. When you set them to high, basically the chip will be start counting. And to be more specific, pin 7 is actually count enable, while pin 10 is the carry in pin which means that if you have a couple of those chips and you want to basically cascade them together the carry in bit basically from the previous chip is going to come to pin 10. We're going to talk about that actually in in program counter and memory counter later in the, in the project but for now since we are just counting um, in this specific circuit from 0 to 15 we really don't need to um, uh, basically do anything special with these pins, we are going to tie them together and then permanently tie them to 5 volt. And that means that that chip will be counting um, continuously, non-stop, and, and, and basically nothing else. Now, you know that a binary counter requires also a clock pulse, right? So in order for a binary counter to count, it, it needs to um, uh, have an input on its uh, clock pulse pin, which is uh, pin number 2 here. And as you can see, our original uh, clock signal is connected to that pin. We also have a master reset pin uh, that is an active low pin. And if you want to reset the pin, we're going to basically bring that low. However, here we have no intention of resetting uh, the chip. Therefore, this pin has been permanently tied to high. So the end result is, is basically... Uh, that when we have a clock pulse coming to this chip, the chip will be counting, and since um, it will be counting indefinitely, it will be counting from 0 to 15, and it's going to put the outputs on the output pins. Now, an interesting thing here is that if you think of 4-bit binary counter, with every two clock pulse that we are receiving uh, on the uh, 
clock signal or as, as input to the chip, we're going to be toggling a Q0 only once. Q0 is the least significant bit on, on this binary counter. And basically, if you think about it, for Q0 to go through a full cycle of going from 0 to 1 and back to 0 requires two clock pulse that comes into the chip. And what it means is basically we are actually dividing the original clock pulse by half if we take the output of the Q0 as our um, clock signal. Now, the same thing applies to the next output which is q1 and that's basically means that with every four clock pulse that is coming to the chip we're gonna toggle this q1 output once so that means actually we are dividing the original clock pulse by four if we are taking the output of the q1 pin now the same thing applies to the next bit q2 and then of course the next bit q3 divided by 8 and divided by 16 now, as you can see, all of those outputs are coming to a set of header pins here. All right, so let's talk about that header pin at the bottom. So as you can see, the output of our um, clock pulse, basically from the crystal oscillator, comes to pin number two. And the rest of the divided clock rates are coming to pin four, six, eight, and 10. In fact, we here have uh, two sets of header pins, a one connecting to the incoming pulses and then another set which are all tied together and essentially that's going to be the output of our clock. So at each point of time we will be just using one of these basically clock rates, meaning that uh, if you want to run the computer at original clock cycle uh, at 3.68 megahertz then we will be shorting pin 2 and pin 1 using a jumper cap or if you want to basically run the computer at half of that original speed then we will be just shorting pin 4 and 3 and this way we would be able to physically um, set the clock rate for our computer uh, now you may ask uh, why we are doing this uh, why we are actually dividing those well there are a couple of reasons for that and first reason is that if we want to actually run the computer at different clock speeds, we could basically come over here and change the speed. And also, uh, later on, we'll be building a UART module, which basically is our module that connects to a PC or a Mac, and you'll be able to make a terminal connection to our computer as your input-output terminal. And those UART modules uh, basically needs a specific speed um, to be set on both sides to work properly and we're going to talk about that later but for now uh, setting a specific speed here will enable us to match that speed on the other side and the UART module and basically we'll be able to connect our computer uh, to a terminal uh, program. So this is really all about clock module and again I need to emphasize here that at each point of time you only will be connecting uh, one set of those pins here. So you cannot actually short, let's say, 2, 1, and 4, 3 at the same time. You either will be using 2 and 1, or you'll be using 4 and 3. So that's that's really all about the clock cycle. Hopefully it's clear um, how it works. Uh, so let's, let's build an MPCB and, uh, and test it using a scope.
All right, so we built the PCB and uh, our clock module is ready for testing. Uh, before uh, getting into testing, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, a couple of more things here. Uh, so we have a clock module at the bottom, and as you can see, we have a crystal oscillator, uh, two sets of uh, pins, header pins, that we could basically select the speed of clock, as I explained in the uh, logic design. And this is basically done uh, using one of these um, jumper caps. So basically we could, uh, you know, short any uh, set of pins here together to get um, uh, that specific speed as output. And then of course we have the uh, binary counter here, the HC161, that basically divide our original clock to um, a specific uh, clock speeds. Um, before we go into testing, I also would like to mention that we have a bust uh, resistor array here, as you can see. This is actually not a part of the clock or even the program counter. Uh, we use this resistor array here uh, to pull up all the bus lines. Uh, you know, normally you don't want your bus lines to be floating. Uh, therefore, you either gonna pull them down uh, or pull them up. Uh, in this uh, computer, we are actually pulling them up using this resistor and that's the purpose of this uh, basically resistor array there. So basically, um, if we are not riding to the bus, all our bus lines uh, will be high, it will be set as um, one. Also, as you can see, we have a, a system reset switch here, and this is basically the master reset switch for the whole computer. Um, what we have here is we have a reset signal uh, which is right here and going to a specific modules. And this uh, reset signal is an active low signal. So by default, we actually set that to high uh, through this resistor. Uh, but whenever you want to reset the computer, we're basically pushing the switch and grounding that specific signal uh, so that uh, the signal will be low and basically that's gonna reset um, specific modules in the computer. So uh, with that introduction, um, let's, let's actually go ahead and uh, test the clock module and see um, how it performs. All right, so in order to test the module, I actually connected that to our um, Arduino shield, as you can see here. Uh, but uh, the reason for that is um, only to provide power to the module. Uh, because as I explained before, we could actually feed the different modules through the Arduino shield. So what I'm gonna do, I'm uh, actually gonna connect um, my USB cable to um, Arduino, and basically that's gonna power up the, um, the module. Now, uh, testing uh, for this module will be quite simple. We just wanna see the output of the crystal oscillator, and also the output of the, uh, the binary counter here, which basically is the divided clocks. So um, let's test that and, and see how, how it works. So first of all, I'm going to connect uh, my ground and we have the uh, ground here uh, on one of those female headers. So I'm going to connect my ground to the ground of the uh, scope. And um, we're going to connect also the the clock. So Let's first uh, connect our scope to uh, the clock output from the oscillator. So if you uh, could see the uh, speed here, uh, we are reading uh, 3.6864 megahertz, uh, which is uh, logical because this is the direct output of the uh, oscillator. Now let's uh, move that connection to other pins and see what we get. So if I move on to the second pin, you see that uh, my clock speed actually changed to uh, 1.8432. Uh, we also could see it here. Uh, so therefore, we are actually dividing our original clock by, by two. And this is the output from the least significant bit from our binary counter. We also could go um, to a different pin. So let's move on to the next pin, which is divided by four and as you can see now we are reading uh, 921.6 kilohertz 
and um, the same thing if you move higher so divided by 8 and now we are reading about 460.8 kilohertz and finally um, the last divider which is divided by 16 we are reading uh, 230 kilohertz so that basically shows that um, how we are dividing the original uh, clock pulse uh, using this uh, binary counter and the outputs are right here on this um, header pin now if I want to let's say run the clock at original speed I'll be just shorting at the first pin uh, on the left hand side to the first pin on the right hand side uh, basically I'm just putting this um, jumper cap and that means that we are outputting uh, the 3.68 megahertz or basically the original uh, clock pulse if I want to run the computer at half of that speed I'm just gonna move that jumper cap to the next set of pins and that basically gives us half of the original uh, clock speed so in general that's that's really about um, testing our clock module uh, as you can see it's quite simple we just um, uh, could get you know different clock speeds based on the settings that we have on this header pins now with that we are basically done with um, our clock module um, in next video I'll be talking about the program counter and uh, we're gonna go through um, circuit logic and of course we're gonna uh, go through testing using our you know, Arduino Mega all right uh, see you there